Welcome to BlackstoneBass.com, where the bite is on. Hey, we're back working on this 1996 24 foot Albemarle. This is going to be a video of how to clean, sand, prime, and paint your uh, transom shield. I'm finally ready now to prime and paint this. The first thing that I did to get this pretty clean, as you see, it's pretty clean in here. I've sanded just the outside here. I used some uh, brake cleaner that helped clean off a lot of dirt and stuff like that and scrubbed it off and sprayed it. And then I used some uh, Mean Green. You, know, you can buy this anywhere, just like the brake cleaner. doesn't matter on what brand. But the uh, Mean Green does an excellent job. You scrub something two or three times, get you some brushes. Same thing I clean my belts with, different size brushes. Getting all these nooks and crannies, and uh, you can get her cleaned up. And the last thing I got to do is sand it, so I'll be ready to prime it. I got some uh, 120 grit sandpaper. I like to use Rhino Wet. It holds up very well, better than the uh, you know hardware store brand. I'll put a link down in the description, and I'll put a link to all the paints and the primer that we're going to use. But as you can see, I got half a little bit of it sanded. I'll show you that and show you the part that's still got to be sanded. Um, this transom shield is in great shape, as you can see. See over here, all this needs to be sanded off. This is where they painted it previously. Um, which was a good thing because it's held up. There's no no pitting in this So I want to keep it like this before I put the new out drive on it's not new, but I rebuilt it painted it um, So it'll all be nice and new and should last several years if I take care of it I tell you what I like having I love having a uh, swim platform until you have to work under it Okay, you just want to sand it and get it clean You don't want to take it down to the bare metal if you can help it Especially on these these edges and things like that because that's where the, the paint has the hardest time sticking to and Anything that you paint is not gonna be as good as the factory. They had some decent paint on here I can see some of this stuff is a little bit hard to come off So I just want to get it smooth it doesn't have to all come off But it just has to be a nice smooth area and something for the paint to stick to You know it's not to be pretty but to protect it, but there's nothing wrong with trying to make it pretty at the same time the out drive came out pretty good considering I'm just a backyard mechanic, spray can, rattle can. Okay, as you can see, I got more than three quarters of it done here. This uh, transom shield, I've got at least five hours in it. And I didn't take off too much of the paint, but I got it good and clean. I've got to still finish this area here. Um, as you can see, I got some of these nooks and crannies that your fingers won't fit into, no matter what you do with the um, sandpaper. So, in comes the, the trusty Dremel, and we're going to get some of these places that are hard to reach, and then we'll be done hopefully soon. I got this area up here to work on also, as you see. But um, that's why it's hard to paint, sand, prime, deal with these out drives, because it's a lot of work, a lot of little nooks and crannies. If you don't take your time to do it right, then the, the paint won't stick and you just waste it all that time. But as you can see, I've got some bottom paint here that's going to kind of get in the way when I go to clean this and degrease it. It's going to pick up this old bottom paint that's flaking off. So I'm going to try to use this uh, hand sander here to knock this out the way. You always want to wear some kind of respirator when you're dealing with removing old paint and stuff like that. You don't know uh, what's in here. It might be harmful to smell. I don't know. So I'm going to put on this respirator. As you can see, some of the sand on my automatic sander here, my hand sander, is not good enough. I don't have a hard enough grip, so I had to go to 100 on some hand, hand sanding to get this cut away. So it ain't too bad. I'll get this done. Too bad I can't use this. I need to get some different uh, grit for this. OK, 
okay it's pretty clean here i just need to degrease it now and get all this uh old paint out the way it's pretty much sanded now i had to do some hand sanding and some use of the little electric sander but i got her out of the way enough so now i can degrease her and do my job yeah i finished sanding this bad boy i got about six hours in it uh painting is all about the prep work I didn't tear up too much, you know, I got down to the metal and some areas, but I had to. There's really no pitting, but uh, I got all the little bad spots off, so now I need to wash it probably two or three times with some more mean green to degrease it. As you can see, I got some dirt and grease on it. Some of it's from this bottom paint. Um, get her cleaned up and then go with some Dawn dishwashing. And then to the vinegar 50-50 solution, that's just my backyard way of doing it. I've seen that online. Of course, there's more expensive ways to treat aluminum and uh, do a professional job, but this seems to do well enough, and uh, it's the way I'm moving forward. Okay, it's now time to clean the uh, transom shield with a little bit of Dawn. Clean it twice, make sure we get all the grease off. Alright, we got everything cleaned up. The last thing I do is put the uh, vinegar wash on, so I need to tape everything up so I can get ready to prime. And of course, I don't want to get any um, paint all over the back of the boat here or nothing else. So get you some painter's tape and get to taping. Okay, as you can see, we're trying to uh, tape around this uh, transom shield here so we don't get paint on the nice, pretty hull. <laughs> Or anything else for that matter. It's just enough room to slide the tape up in between it so it ain't too bad here on the bottom. Around the sides it was a little bit tight. I'm going to get about two runs of tape around the outside of this. And then I'll put plastic, you know, some kind of plastic all the way around the back of the boat. And underneath the um, swim platform and stuff like that. You can tell it's hot out here by Sham's painting. What do you think, Sham? Can you sit? Is it hot out? Can you sit, boy? What? It said with a camera. Hey. Good man. That's a good boy. It's hot out here. As always with the boat. <laughs> Working on the boat. I got bees after me. Um, anyway, I got most of this tape around up against the transom shield. I did all the inside. Pretty much everything I need to do from uh, from this side, I mean. Now I'm going to get in the inside and uh, take care of it. To get what we need to cover up these holes. So I'm not shooting paint all up in the boat in the bilge area. Stuff like that. This is a shifter cable. I'm going to get a new one, but I need to just, I don't want to paint it all up. So make sure you get paint, I mean, uh, tape all over the places you don't want to get paint. It got it all taped up, so when I spray the primer and then the paint, it won't go all up inside the bilge. And I just need to get the rest of the back of the boat covered so I don't end up painting it. Okay, as you can see, I've got all the tape on here. Now I've got a uh, some plastic. What I did was I just got some cheap tablecloths for a dollar from the Dollar Tree it's just as easy as using plastic and one thing I would have done was I should have cleaned the rest of the boat area because it's made the tape hard to stick so anyway well you live and you learn so I'm gonna put plastic now on both sides to cover these trim cylinders and I should be ready to um, start priming I gotta wait till like 3 or 5 o'clock today so the humidity will be back down like around 60 or 55 right now it was at 100 this morning so, needless to say, I'm getting some sweat equity out of this baby. Everything taped up. The last step that I want to do is I got some 50-50 vinegar, white vinegar and water. Um, and I'm going to give it a little bath with this vinegar. And then you want to blow it dry with like an air compressor. And immediately prime it when it gets dry. Because this aluminum, as it's got some raw spots on it, this aluminum is supposed to help neutralize some of that. But the minute that it's dry the atmosphere starts uh working against it corroding it somehow i don't know i don't understand all it's supposed to be but that's what happens so we're gonna a little vinegar bath and then we'll blow her off and start to prime it of course remember i cleaned it already with grease lightning twice uh dawn dishwashing soap Get all the grease off and get it clean as possible. And right now I gotta hose it off. Be careful not to blow all the uh, tape out or mess up my spot here. My... Okay, 
a zinc chromate primer here shake it up well make sure you get a respirator on this stuff not good to breathe and some safety goggles You can see I got one coat here, zinc chromate primer on. You don't want to go too heavy. You get orange peel and then it'll run or it don't stick. It'll take a long time to dry. Just want to get one good kind of thin coat. And notice how you can kind of see the old color a little bit through it and uh, get that sort of bite into the metal. So we'll see. It don't look too bad. Okay, I got her all primed up, ready for some paint. I just got to let her dry. Don't look too bad. Main thing is seal up everything nice and uh, for protection. <clears throat> All right, it's time for me to put some real paint on today. Uh, this primer, the last coat has dried over 24 hours. Make sure that you uh, read all the directions on your can. Some things take longer to dry than others. Some things are 24 hours. Some, the first coat could be 48 hours and then 24 after that or just after the first hour. Uh, keep an eye on your humidity. It's been very humid here in Virginia, so I've had to paint at different times of the day. I've had 100% humidity. That's not a good... Uh, time that you want to paint so I didn't paint then I waited till it got down below 60% which has been a real chore here <laughs> lately so I don't know if this causes for a respirator but I'm gonna wear it anyway uh, so if you got one it's always good to wear it why breathe all these fumes if you don't need to again make sure you shake your cans up well and uh, thin coats thin coats multiple thin coats you don't want to have orange peel or a bunch of runs See what the first coat looks like it's not too thick notice it just kind of got it on there thin just kind of getting a cover on it letting it uh bite into the the primer it's hard to get this top done i know that this plastic keeps getting in the way but i got one little thick area there but you just want to kind of go on there thin like i said you're not going to get it all the right color the first time that's why it takes several layers and that way you have a good uh you know paint job when you're done Okay, I got three coats on her. I think that's about it. I might have a little bit of touching up around on his outside pieces. Um, it's hard to get to with that swim platform in the way. Okay, the last step that we got to do to this uh, transom shield is we're going to put some, uh, some molar here, clear coat on. This is to help uh, toughen up the paint a little bit. Hopefully it won't get knocked off so easy. Uh, they suggest that. This is for uh, clear coat formulated for marine environment. I'll put a link in the description to everything that I've used uh, on this project and uh, we'll see how it comes out, but this is the last step. You can see I got the clear coat on now to shine. I would suggest maybe uh, two to three light, very light coats of clear coat to help uh, harden up your paint so it doesn't get chipped off. Main thing is protection.